sisters, it's me, Jennifer Jade. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. Um, I feel like I might need to back up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Hey! So my name is Jennifer Jade. I'm a soul alignment coach for aspiring and existing entrepreneurs and women in general that are seeking spiritual awakening, alignment, and to live a joyful, soul-aligned life full time. So we're gonna talk personal growth, spiritual growth, but also business strategies. It's also something that I'm very passionate about sharing about and, and empowering and helping others with. So if you've been following along in the series, um, the five steps to living a soul-aligned life full time, you may have caught videos one, two, and or three. Um, I'm gonna do just a brief review of those three videos just in case um, you miss them because I'm gonna carry on with step four tonight. So um, the first three steps, oh, and by the way, please say hi, I wanted to write that. Um, I wanted to write that in the title of the, let me see if I can do that. Oh, there we go. Um, so let's review videos one, two, three real quick. And even if you did watch them, it'll be a great little catch up review for you to feel really connected with step four. And if you miss them, this will help you also connect with step four. But you're welcome to actually go back and watch videos one, two, and three if you scroll down in the news feed of the Savvy Soul Sister Group. So video one, um, in living a soul aligned life full time, we often jump to conclusions. Okay, well, what's my big picture? What do I want? Um, and what do I have to do to get there? And then I'll be happy and then I can finally breathe and rest easy. Or some people are not even there yet and they're still really focused on what they don't want. Oh gosh, my life sucks. I can never keep up with the bills. Oh, and now this is coming around the corner and this is happening, which is which is just going to get you more of what you don't want. So often we're either in the place of focusing on what we don't want and wondering why we keep getting more of what we don't want, or we're in a place of wanting something more and focusing on what we do want, but it being this big, far off, distant thing that feels out of reach and maybe even impossible and we don't know where to start and, and so we just don't. Um, video one was about the very first step to clarity and momentum in a direction you actually wanna go in and that is getting very clear on how you desire to feel. So if for any reason in your life you are feeling um, unhappy, unfulfilled, lacking momentum, stagnant, stuck, any of these things, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, um, then it's time to really start getting clear on how you desire to feel. Do you desire to feel abundant? Do you desire to feel joyful? Do you desire to feel free? Do you desire to feel rich? You know, what are the, the very essences of what you desire to feel? If you look at the things on your vision board, if you, if you consider the things that you're daydreaming about or wish that you had or wish that you were, you wish you had a million dollars, you wish you had a million clients, you wish you had a yacht, you wish any single wish or desire, the, the purpose of any of those things is because you believe it will make you feel good to have them, to have that outcome, to have that money, to have those clients, to have that business, whatever it is, you, you have a belief it's going to make you feel good when you have X, Y, Z. And the thing is, is if you are approaching what you want from a place of lack, um, from a place of I don't have that or that's not possible for me or why does this person get to have that and I don't and why isn't it working for me? I'm trying, I'm trying so hard and I'm working so hard and I'm wishing so hard and and doing so hard, why isn't it working for me? And it's because the desire is disconnected from belief. Um, how can I put that more simply? For example, the word freedom. If you're like, oh, I wish I had freedom. I wish that I 
didn't have to wake up to an alarm clock and I wish that I didn't have to work at this nine to five and I wish that I didn't have this. Well, number one, we're focusing on things we don't want. So if you change that to focus on what you do want, why? Okay, then I wish that I had a thriving business and I wish that I had a million dollars in the bank and I wish that I had, well, these wishes, if you can, or these desires, if you can hear it, they sound like I'm desiring them because I feel like I'm lacking, right? There's, there's a gap between what I'm saying I want and how I actually feel about that. Does that make sense? Let me know if, if, if that point makes sense. I, I wish I had this or I desire this, but I'm saying it from a place of almost disbelief that it's possible for me or not knowing how I'm gonna get there. So really, even though I'm, having, I'm focusing on what I want, the truth is the energy that I'm holding is disbelief and disconnect. So it's not gonna get you momentum towards what you want. What is going to get you momentum towards what you want is getting clear on, well, why do I want this job or this business or this income or this client or this money or whatever, this boat, this car, why do I want it? What do I think it's going to make me feel when I have it? Oh, okay. I'm going to feel more um, like... I get to create my life. I like that. The freedom to create my own life, to create my own day, to create my own hours. It feels really spacious. I really like that. Um, I feel really abundant. I feel like I can receive more and I can give more. And that feels really good. I really like being generous. I really like um, being able to pay my bills with ease. That feels really good. I love ease. I love spaciousness, I love flow, I love feeling happy, I love feeling joyful and not worried, I love that. Okay, so now you're getting clear on what your core desired feelings are, and that's video one. It could be joyful, um, purposeful, meaningful, spacious, ease, freedom, flow, you know, pick what your, and, and determine what your top two or three are, and then get into alignment with those feelings now. Now, I'm not saying you have to pretend you already have the yacht of your dreams. You have to pretend you already have the job of your dreams or the business of your dreams. I'm saying notice in your life where you already have areas or pockets where you feel those feelings. You know, you get to take a lunch. If you're at a nine to five, you get to take a lunch break and that's, a, that's freedom. You get to leave the office and go do lunch with whoever you want, wherever you want. And so showing silent, you know, appreciation and gratitude. You're like, you know what? This is really nice. This is really cool that I can leave here and I can go wherever I want. I'm experiencing freedom right now, you know, and say it's 5.01 PM. Ah, oh, my work day is done. You know, I've earned a paycheck. That's great. I have money coming my way. And now I get to go home and see people I love and, I can, you know, have a nice meal with my family and, and you know, whatever it is. Ah, oh, that feels really um, joyful. I really enjoy spending time with my family. I love being at home. I love putting on my sweatpants and just relaxing. And that feels really good. That feels really good. So you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm not focusing on what I don't want, that I wish that I have, that I don't have, that I'm really actually feeling like lack because I don't have what I want. I'm focusing on how I desire to feel and noticing where I feel it already in my life. And so what you're doing is you're raising your vibration to be in alignment with more of those things, circumstances, places, money, clients, whatever, that are, are on that vibrational level. If you're vibrating lack and scarcity down here, then you're on the vibrational level of more lack and more scarcity. If you can start to raise your vibration to how you desire to feel, joy, spaciousness, freedom, purpose, whatever, you were to get up into the level of those things and now they can flow to you. If you think about water, right? It can flow um, where you're at, where, where it goes to the path of least resistance. And if you are in a place of lack, scarcity, all these things, that is resistance and you're not going to allow in the things and, and desires and, and money and clients and whatever it is that you do desire. So get to the root of how you want to feel, how you think this big 
dream of yours is going to make you feel when you have it and put a name on those feelings and then notice today where you're already experiencing those feelings all day every day notice notice when you're feeling joyful notice when you're feeling like abundance is coming in you found you know a penny on the ground or a five dollar bill in your jacket pocket or you went to pay for the groceries and they end up being a lot less than you thought they were or you know you go to pay for a shirt and it's 50 percent off you didn't know that you know this, these are all ways that abundance is coming to you so notice them show appreciation for them gratitude and what you focus on expands what you focus on expands what you focus on expands so that was video one let's go to video two um Video two was about taking inspired action versus um, uh, hamster wheel action. I don't know how else to, I don't know what to call that meaningless action or like, I don't know what to call that other piece, but um, inspired action is when you feel inspired from within to, to do something. Um, it could be to take a course, it could be to have a conversation with this stranger on at the bus stop or in the grocery store line. Um, maybe that stranger has, happens to say something to you, even just a few words, and you're like, oh, damn. You know, something just clicked with me when that person said that. You know, taking this inspired action, taking this inspired action to, you know, do something different this weekend, do something that feels joyful and adventurous. Um, do it, taking the inspired action to take a dance class in. I mean, what's the purpose of a dance class, but, but something's telling you to do it. So you do it, or you try a new form of meditation or you learn calligraphy or, or a, the Italian language or whatever it is. But there's these things that you feel inspired to do. And I'm saying, do them, follow through and do them. There is a purpose you're, There's a reason you're feeling inspired to do them. And it is your free will. It is your choice. No one can do it for you. Not even the universe can do it for you to go forth and do those inspired things that come your way. Now, the opposite would be, well, doing nothing. <laughs> um, or what I think is even worse than doing nothing is, is doing frantic hamster wheel action, taking frantic hamster wheel meaningless action. So let's say, I'm just going to say you want to start a business. Like, let's use this as an example. Um, let's say you want to start a business and you see that Joe Blow, why am I going to say Joe Blow? Joe Blow over here <laughs> has started a business similar to what you want to be starting. And maybe you look up to Joe and, and he does a really great job with his business and he, he seems to be very happy and thriving. And he says, in order to be successful, you have to do this, 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 and this. You need to start posting in Facebook groups and you need to start going to business network meetings and you need to join LinkedIn and you need to, you know, start cold calling people and you need to start like spamming people's emails and inboxes. And you're like, okay, this would be the meaning, this would be the hamster wheel action. Okay, that all sounds terrible to me, but. Joe Blow over here is very successful and he's telling me that if I do this, I will be successful too. So I'll do it. And off you go. And there's nothing wrong with doing these things that I just listen. I just happen to use examples of things that I would never do that I don't like doing. And you start doing things that there's a part of you that knows you don't want to do this, that this doesn't really feel good to you. But you override that feeling because Joe Blow over here told you you'd be successful if you did it. So you start doing the cold calling, you start going to all the business network meetings, you start posting in all these different Facebook groups, you start um, you know, um, spamming people's emails and inboxes, um, all these things you don't really want to do, um, but you know, you're overriding that nagging sensation that you don't want to do it because you know, someone outside of you said you should do this. And the problem with that is uh, this analogy that I heard just the other day and, and uh, I want to share it again in case you didn't catch it. And that is the example of the toaster. So let's say someone described to you how to make toast. They said, you got to buy a loaf of bread, you got to open up the package, you got to take two slices out, put them in the toaster, push down the, the button and boom, you'll get toast. 
And the thing is, is if you're just blindly following these actions without consulting your inner guide, the in, inner guide, inspiration, um, that is the same as doing all the action and never having plugged in the toaster. Do you get what I'm saying? So you could be doing all this action, you could be spinning your wheels and feeling like you're on this hamster wheel and feeling like you're putting in all the work and all the effort and nothing is happening, nothing. You don't feel good, there's no momentum happening, you feel out of alignment, you, you wonder why you're working so hard, nothing's, go, nothing's changing, and it's because you overrode your inner guide, your inspiration, to listen to something outside of you that never resonated with you. So that's just an example, but the video two was taking inspired action and trusting that inner guide that inspired, um, you know, um, what are they called? Inspired triggers, impulses, those inspired impulsors. <laughs> Heather, hey Heather, hey in Australia. Oh my gosh, what time is it in Australia? Um, so anyway, video two, inspired action versus that meaningless, unplugged, frantic, chaotic action or no action at all. Um, video three was about ego and so just briefly to summarize, video three was anytime you're about to do something you've never done before, anytime you're about to, um, oh, it's 2.30 p.m. in Australia. Oh, right, because you're a day ahead but six hours behind or something like that. Um, so it's, it is 7.30 here p.m., dark out, snowing. It is not Australia here. <laughs> Anyways, um, when you're about to do something outside of your comfort zone, something you've never done before, something that um, that reptilian part of your brain recognizes as um, new territory and therefore unsafe because it's unknown and what if you aren't able to survive? It, it's a it's a two thousand year old part of the brain and its sole its sole job is to ensure that you survive meaning you can eat food, you have shelter, um, you know, those things. It cares nothing about you being happy or abundant or fulfilled or purposeful. It does not care about that. It cares about you surviving, not thriving, surviving. So anytime you're about to move out of your comfort zone, do something new, all these bells and whistles go off in the brain and say, don't do it. Don't go out there. You don't know if you're gonna make money. You don't know if you're gonna be successful. What if everyone laughs at you? What if the tribe, because it's this tribe mentality from 2000 years ago that we used to actually need to survive. What if it says, you know, you're out of here and, and we don't like you anymore and you're a joke and all of these things. So that's gonna go off in your brain. That's a scientific real thing. I usually refer to the ego. Um, the, the ego does serve a purpose. It provides contrast in our life so we can tell what we do want often by what we don't want. So ego d does serve a role in our life that is helpful, I've come to learn. But uh, it gets really, really loud when you're about to do something that is outside of your comfort zone, that is really just trusting your intuition, those inspired guidances. When you're about to trust those and move forward with those and really have no idea where you're gonna end up or if it's gonna work out or what anyone's gonna say or think or if you're gonna make money or not or you know if you're gonna fall or fly or what but you're trusting that ego is gonna crank up the volume and it's gonna throw in your face so many reasons and excuses and fears as to why you should absolutely not trust your intuition so it could say things like it could be it can be gentle it can be um, as as smooth as procrastination you know what Lisa I think that's a great idea that you take that course but not right now you know things are really busy right now for you and I think you should wait until the spring I think it would be really good for you just wait till the spring and then spring will come around and ego will be like you know what it's about to be summer why don't you wait till, you know what, enjoy your summer, you can do this in the fall. How about you do it in the fall? That would be a better idea. And then the fall comes and then ego gives you another excuse and another excuse. So ego can be very smooth with using procrastination, with using perfectionism, 
um, you know, delaying, distracting you. Um, oh, you know what? That's a great idea. How about you, you know, start that new blog post right after you do the dishes. Do the dishes first, then you can just relax and you can write a really good blog post. So then you do the dishes and then you go sit down to write your blog post. It's like, oh, you know what? I haven't folded that laundry yet. Maybe I'll go fold that laundry. So distraction is another one. These are actually gentle examples of ego, um, but it can be right up there with you will lose your home, you won't be able to make your mortgage payments or your rent payments, everyone's gonna laugh in your face, your husband or significant other is gonna leave you because they don't wanna be married to some loser who thinks they can just go follow their dreams somewhere, um, you're gonna be an embarrassment to your kids or you're a selfish mom, you need to be more realistic, the time for your dreams is done, you need to you know, grind it out at your job now and make sure you can afford their college. Um, you know, there's just, there's so many things and because ego lives inside of you, it knows exactly what buttons to press to keep you still, to keep you stuck, to keep you in that known surviving territory. So I wanted to arm you with that knowledge that if you do desire to live a soul aligned life full time, and if for you that means you need to make some transitions in your life or some shifts in your life, then please be prepared that there's gonna be this inner critic inside of you fighting tooth and nail um, to stop you. The, more, the, the less attention you give it and the less power you give it. You give it power when you succumb to the fears. When you're like, you know what? You're right, I shouldn't do this. I, I am, I'm not smart enough to do this. I'm not talented enough to do this. I don't have the time for this. I don't have the money for this. Yeah, maybe I will wait till the fall. Maybe that is a better idea. So you're giving it more and more power. And so that kind of juices it up to use that against you. Whereas if you start taking power away from that and putting it instead into trusting your intuition, trusting your inner guide, taking action on those inspired impulses, then you're going to more clearly and, um, swiftly be able to move onto your path of least resistance to what it is you truly want and how you truly desire to feel. Um, and the good news is the less and less and less you pay attention to ego, the less and less power you give it, the less and less power it has over you. So you won't have to listen to this big, loud, crazy ego voice every single time you move out of your comfort zone. It might start to creep up. It might start to, it might try to sneak in here and there, but ultimately it's going to start to lose power over you. The more you practice um, letting it be and you trusting your inner guide instead and those, those inspired impulses. So that was videos one, two, and three. Hey Giselle, thanks for the hearts. Um, okay. And if you're here watching live, let me know, say hi. Oh, hi, Amanda. Hi, Pat. Hi, Heather. Cool. Thanks for saying hi, ladies. Um, and feel free to ask any questions. I'm going to pause at the end and, and answer any questions. Okay, so step four. Step four. Who's excited? Got my selenite. Let's do it. Okay, step four in living a soul-aligned life full time. <sighs> Where are my uh, type A's in the house? Do I have any type A's watching? Any former recovering perfectionists? Any control freaks? Um, if you're out there, let me know. I definitely resonate. That is exactly how I was for all of my life um, up until becoming a wedding photographer. I really had to start to let that part of me go when I became a wedding photographer because that shit didn't fly on a wedding day. I could not be type A control freak on a wedding day because anything goes on a wedding day. Like you have no idea how much time you're going to get to shoot or if you have to change locations, what the weather is going to be like, any of those things. So you really have to learn how to be present and go with the flow. And I've, I've modeled that into my life. It hasn't always been easy, but it's definitely been worth it. And it's definitely helped me in growing the business that I have today is going with the flow. So step four is letting go of control. Does anyone have a problem with that one? I know I did. Letting go of control, letting go of the hows, how it's going to happen. 
So let's say you have a dream to, to have your own business or grow your existing business and you, you can see it. You can see that you want to speak from stages and have best-selling books and, and a, you know, a, a, a new and noteworthy podcast and millions of clients and, and everything is thriving and everything's amazing. Um, so you have a couple of options at this point and that is you, you try to control how that's going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to create this business plan and I'm going to dictate that this is going to happen by this time and this is going to happen by this time and this is going to happen this time and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and then this will happen and then I'll do this and it's really trying to control how every step is going to, to roll out. Um, then, or, which is even, I think, even worse, is not knowing how to create a plan or steps to get to from where you are to where you want to be. You can't see all of the steps and so you don't even try to move forward at all because you can't see how it would work out so you don't even try. That's even worse than trying to over control every step of the way to where you want to go. Um, at least if you're trying to over control every step you're at least doing something to move forward um, but still Trying to control the outcomes and the steps and the hows is going to limit you and is going to slow you down. And I know if you're really a type A kind of person, um, that can be really hard to understand. That took me a long time to understand. You know, I thought to myself, how on earth, if I'm putting in the action and putting the plans in place and the structures and the business plans and the da 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 da, then I'm I'm making things happen. Like I'm putting in the effort, I'm putting in the work, and I'm gonna make it happen. How, if I let go of that, is that going to help me? That makes no sense. And so I totally get that if that feels confusing. So stick with me while I unpack this a little bit. The universe knows where you want to go and where you want to end up and ultimately how you want to feel. So it's up to you to get into alignment with that, which we've already talked about now. Getting into alignment with how you want to feel now so that you can welcome more and more and more and more and more of that feeling into your life. And the universe is, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna say intuition. I'm gonna say intuition, which is in my soul belief, um, connected to the universe and is your inner divine guidance. So your intuition is connected to infinite intelligence and it is like your inner GPS system. It is always guiding you on your path of least resistance. And if you're sitting here trying to create your own map and you're like, okay, well, let, let's use a GPS system as an example. Okay, I'm, I'm here, I wanna get here. Okay, so I've decided that I'm gonna go left and then left and then right and then left and then left again, right, and straight and then left and then and left and right. And then say you start to go forward and your inner GPS, which actually is accurate and knows the path of least resistance, it knows where the traffic is and the accidents are and, and all the stuff that you can avoid so that you can get to where you wanna be faster, is saying, no, actually, you wanna go right first. You wanna go right, go right. And so now you're at this, no, I already said I'm going left. I'm going left. I already said that. That was my plan. That was my plan. So now you're, you're kind of fighting. You're kind of resisting. You're, you're creating um, the long route for yourself, a detour for yourself. Whereas if you're like, you know what? This is where I am. This is where I desire to be. And I am going to use my inner GPS in order to get there. And I'm just going to trust that if an idea feels good, I'm gonna move ahead with it. If, if, if an idea or a concept doesn't feel good, I'm gonna let it go and I'm gonna wait for the next idea that feels good. And you do not have to see every single turn and left and right and all of those things in order to get started driving towards where you wanna be. You don't need to know all of the exits and the, and the underpasses and bridges and all of those things in order to get there. You just have to Put the keys at the ignition, put your foot on the gas, and get going. And how you follow that inner GPS is kind of like playing. Did you ever play when you were little that game of, of hot and cold? Um, so someone hits something, right? And 
when you were getting closer to it, they would say warmer, 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 hotter, 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 hotter. And if you were moving away from it, then you would hear, you know, colder, 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 freezing, freezing, freezing. And it's the same when you're working your inner GPS. When you are moving on the path of your least resistance, you will feel that warmer, 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 joyful, exciting, um, inspiring, intriguing, fascinating, interesting, and you follow that feeling and you will be on your path of least resistance to exactly where you wanna be. If you are trying to be in control of every direction, every step, everything, then it won't necessarily be your path of least resistance. It might actually be your hardest path. Um, so letting go of control, letting go of the hows. I was actually on a call with the girls in my group program today and uh, one of them, um, Tahita, I don't know if she's watching, she said, Jen, can you share a little bit with, with us about the first six months or 12 months of your business? Um, you know, you had a lot of success pretty fast. I'd love to learn, you know, how exactly you did that or, you know, what your business plan was and what model you followed. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy to share that. And of course, I go into this great detail of, of everything that I did in the first six months, 12 months of my business. And I said, but, but ultimately, my strategy was no strategy. I literally didn't have a business plan. I didn't know when I was launching what. I, I didn't think anything out three months in advance or six months in advance. I, no, I didn't. And, and what I did was I started out with what excited me the most to offer. I started out with what, what excited me the most to offer in my business. And I implemented that and I, I grew the momentum of that. And then when that momentum felt like it didn't feel exciting anymore, it didn't feel joyful anymore, then I asked myself, what would feel exciting now? What would feel exciting now? What would fit, you know, how I want to feel and how, and what I want to deliver, what I want to serve, what I want to give. And then it came to me what I wanted to create next. And so that's what I did. And I offered that and um, went with that momentum and then when that was coming to a close I paid attention to to the girls that you know were working with me and and I could see that they were asking questions around something that I would love to give guidance on so then I created you know something else and and they joined me in that and that felt really really good and then after that I thought well what do I want to do now like what do I, what would excite me now? What feels good to create now? And then another idea came. And so I created that and I went with the momentum of that. And, and that is how I have built my entire business. I did it with, actually, I've never had a business plan in my life. <laughs> I never have. So not in my mortgage business, not in my photography business and not in my coaching business. And I've done fairly well for myself. So you know, there's some people who, and, and I'm not saying, you know, let's not think in extremes here. I'm not saying a business plan is a terrible thing and you should never have a business plan. I'm saying for me, it didn't feel good, you know, and that's the bottom line. Does it feel good or not? A business plan didn't feel good for me. It felt like added pressure. It felt like added expectation onto myself. It felt like deadlines. It felt heavy. So I thought, you know what? As long as I'm creating, as long as I'm, you know, doing what I love and I'm passionate about it and I'm excited about it, I know that there's going to be someone somewhere out there who will want what I'm creating. I trust that I was inspired to create this for a reason. I always trust anything that I'm inspired to do is for a reason. And it doesn't matter if my head understands or not. Your heart, your soul, your intuition knows so much more and, and is always 10 steps ahead of your head. So if, you, if you're constantly waiting for your head to understand why or how, then you'll always be 10 steps behind. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if you're watching live or you're watching the replay. Um, if that makes sense, if, you, if you're constantly waiting till your head understands, which is, is kind of along the lines of what I'm talking about, being in control of the hows and all of the steps and needing to know them all in advance before you'll agree to, to move forward. If you need to know that in your head first, you'll always actually be 10 steps behind. 
um, and you can actually be making life a lot more difficult for yourself. When you start to trust your intuition, your inner guide, and you start to take a step forward, and they can be baby steps. I'm not saying you have to go quit your job tomorrow and, and hope that you know some business idea comes to you when by the time you get home and that you have clients by the next day. I'm not saying you have to make these massive crazy leaps. I'm saying start taking baby steps. Start getting close to your inner guide, and when it says, hey, Bring your umbrella today on your walk, even though it's a blue sky. Bring your umbrella, see what happens. Or don't bring your umbrella and pay attention. Did it start raining? You know, so start practicing listening to your inner guide. Start taking those steps. If your inner guide is saying, hey, you know what? Wouldn't it be kind of cool to, um, to take like a jazzercise class? Or wouldn't it be kind of cool to, um, you know, go to this um, meditation? I keep seeing that, what is that capsule med um uh, sensory deprivation meditation. Wouldn't that be cool? Why don't you go try that? And you do it, right? You just do it because you're inspired to and you never know why. Maybe it's just that you get this really awesome epiphany while you're doing that meditation or you start doing this this jazzercise class and, and all of this movement and dancing actually gets your energy fired up again. So you actually do become in alignment with the things that you want. Maybe you meet someone who gives you this great idea or this great connection or teaches you something or whatever it is. But those inspired guidances are always for a reason and I don't second guess them anymore. I mean, I'm sure there's sometimes that I do when I don't realize that I am. But when I'm aware that I'm getting an inspired guidance or a nudge, which again is just something that feels good or intriguing or inspiring, I act on it. I act on it always because I know, I know well enough now that it's always for a reason. It's always guiding me in my highest and best path, my path of least resistance. So step four is let go of control, let go of knowing the hows, let go of knowing if it's gonna work out or not before you'll agree to move forward. I would love to um, share a little bit, um, a story. Um, you know, hey Tracy, yay, so happy you're here. I'd love to share a story around, uh, like give you an actual example of this. So um, my husband was a, well, still is, but he doesn't fight professionally anymore. Um, a top level, like top ranked, number one ranked in Canada, mixed martial arts fighter, professional mixed martial artist. And he would be paid, you know, really well to, to have these MMA, kind of like UFC, right? UFC style fights in Canada. And um, eventually he started getting some uh, injuries or deterioration in his neck and shoulder that ultimately forced him to have to stop fighting sooner than he wanted to, right? Sooner than he had visualized and, and w wanted. And so he had to have surgery and he had to stop fighting. And um, a little while after that, I asked him, well, you know, what would you want to do now? If you could do anything, what would that be? And he said, well, I would, I want to open a gym. And I said, great, you know, let's get started. I was excited. And he said, well, I can't open a gym. And I said, well, why wouldn't you be able to do that? And he said, because I don't have a million dollars for all the equipment and I don't have a space and I don't have all of these things and nor do I think I'll ever have, you know, the money to, to start a gym. Like that's just ridiculous. And I said, oh my gosh, and this is when it really hit me, the power of um, letting go of the house. So many people will not even attempt to live their dream or to take any steps towards what they wish they could have in their life or create in their life because they don't understand how they can get from here to there. So they don't even try. They don't even take one step. And I said to him, oh my goodness, like, we have a garage and we have some workout gear down there and people are already asking if they can come here and train with you. If they, if you can show them how to hit pads or, you know, whatever, you know, run them through a workout. They're already asking you and you're already doing it for free. Like imagine if you charged 20 bucks a session. Imagine if, you know, a couple people started coming for 20 bucks. Remember, imagine if, you know, five people started coming and maybe you started charging $50 a session. 
maybe enough people come that the, the, the garage is too small and you move to some kind of, you know, maybe it's not a stunning space, but it's a, it's a little bit bigger than the garage. You have a bit more room. You can do a bit more things, have a bit more clients. And let's say you go there for a little while and let's say you outgrow that space and you have more clients and you're charging more and now you can move into a nicer space and a nicer space and, and, and before you know it, one day you have this big, beautiful gym that you once thought you could never have. And um, so he thought about that and, and uh, I think it was, let me think about this. A year later, a year later, he was working um, in Alberta. So if anyone, any Canadians know, he was working in oil uh, in Alberta at this time because he couldn't fight anymore. And one of the guys that he knew from his mixed martial arts days happened to also be working there. And it was just a coincidence. It was just a fluke, right? And they got to talking and through another connection they had, there was actually this space available where they could start a gym together inside of an existing gym. So I'm talking, the mats are already there, a ton of the gear is already there, there's already these gloves and these wraps, and they basically, and they would pay half the rent that you know you normally would pay because there's already an existing business there, and an existing gym, but the, the gym owner doesn't really use it very much, so they would have it for the majority of the time, but have a really low rent and all the gear is already set up. And so now he has his own gym. He has him and his business partner have his own gym and it's big and it's awesome. I go there all the time. You might've seen me posting videos working out there. And so something that he once thought was completely impossible, a complete never ever going to happen, now is his reality. And actually we were watching a, a video of him and his business partner kind of like, um, holding pads for one another just yesterday and I said isn't this funny that you know a year ago you would have been doing this together out in the oil fields out in Alberta and now here you are both doing this in your own gym and it's just it's just a really cool feeling when you can let go of the house and let go of control and just allow that inner guide to move you one step forward and another step forward, and another step forward, and another step forward. You've got to take that action. You've got to take that action in trust. So I'm not saying take the action when, when the whole yellow brick road is laid out for you and you can see steps A through Z. Now it's safe to take a step forward. Now it's time. No, I'm saying have an idea of how you want to feel. You probably have an idea of what you want to create or what you want your life to look like. Point your feet in that direction and take just one baby step towards it. Just one baby step towards it. And when you take that action, when you take that baby step, another baby step will be revealed to you. And it's revealed to you in a way that it feels good. It feels exciting. It feels like a good idea, a light bulb moment, an epiphany, an aha, a download, a connection, a you know suggestion. And yeah, it feels good. And so you take another step. You take action on that that next step and then you get another feeling another sensation of another idea that feels good for you or another connection another whatever and, and you take action on that and then you take that step forward and again and again and again and that is how you get from where you are to where you want to be and living a soul aligned life full time it's entrusting the inner guy taking action on it that one step and then moving ahead another step after that. But if you sit there, oh, thanks Tracy, I'll, I'll see you soon. Thanks for popping in. If you sit here and wait until you understand all of the hows and all of the steps, and if it's gonna work out, and if you're gonna be successful, and if everyone's gonna approve of you, if you sit here and wait for that, you're gonna be waiting for the rest of your life. You'll be waiting away the rest of your life. The time is now. The time is now. So there's one more step, step five, that I'm going to reveal on Saturday. So I hope you will join me live on Saturday. It's gonna be the big finale, the big conclusion to this series, the five steps to living a soul aligned life full time. So that's gonna be Saturday. It's gonna be Saturday 
um, you know, morning or midday. I'll announce in the group when it's going to be. But it's going, I'm saving the best for last. I hope you will join on Saturday live. Um, but just a quick recap. Step one, get clear on how you want to feel. All those things that you want, all those dreams that you have, why? What do you think you're going to feel when you have them? And start focusing on those feelings now. Where do you feel those feelings now? How can you create more of those feelings in your life now? Number two, inspired action versus the hamster wheel action. Don't go out there running around doing what everyone else is telling you to do or copying what everyone else is doing and just running, 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 running and throwing the spaghetti at the wall and hoping some of it sticks. You're going to get really tired and really drained and really misaligned that way. You know, instead, take the inspired action. You know, if, if there's someone who you resonate with and they're teaching in a way that resonates with you, work with them. If someone makes a suggestion to you and you're like, yeah, I do want to try that. That does feel good. Do it. If someone else says, hey, this is the only way to be successful and you have to start cold calling and, and, and joining LinkedIn and doing these, don't do it. Don't do it. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel aligned. Don't do it. I don't care if this is, I don't care if it's Oprah telling you this is how you start a successful TV show. If she's telling you to start it in a way that you're just like, ugh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be cold calling and spamming and, and doing all these. I don't know if that feels good for me. Then don't do it. Just do what is a connected plug, toaster plugged in yes for you. That's it. Number three, video three, ego. When you're gearing up to do something outside of the normal, outside of your comfort zone, there's very likely going to be a, a voice coming up saying, oh, but should you really be doing that? Are you really qualified for this? Shouldn't you be a little bit more realistic? Shouldn't you be a little bit more just grateful for the life you already have? Like, hmm, how about you do this next year, next month? How about you start next week? Well, you don't have time for this right now. You don't have money for this right now. Like, you know what? You, you're not educated enough. You know, there's already enough people doing this in the world. The world doesn't need you to do this too. That is not true. Trust that you were given this inspired idea or this inspired desire because it's meant for you. It's meant for you. It's possible for you. Do not empower the voice that disempowers you. That's step three. And step four, of course, was today, let go of control, let go of the hows, let go of having to know in advance if it's gonna work out or what all of the steps are or thinking that you need to know exactly how you're getting from point A to point Z before you move forward. Because if you wait until you see exactly how you're gonna get from point A to point Z, you're gonna be waiting for the rest of your life. So it's time to start moving forward with those inspired impulses, baby step, baby step, baby step. And then you'll, you'll take those baby steps, kind of just like a baby, and you'll be like, oh damn, like I can walk, like I can do this. And you're gonna take bigger steps and bigger steps and strides and strides and strides and running and running and sprinting and sprinting and flying, flying. So I hope, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments whether you're watching the live or the replay. If this has been serving you, if you've been taking any helpful nuggets away from this, let me know. I would love to hear it. Let me know if anything stood out for you or was especially helpful for you. I'm going to have a quick peek and see if there was any, um, any questions. I don't think there was, but I'll have a quick little look here. Oh, shoot. Okay, so Heather said she had some, some bad reception, so she'll maybe watch catch the replay. Um, Tracy popped in. Yay. Heather's in Australia. So, so cool to have someone from Australia here. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for being here. Hi, Pat. Good evening to you. And I've seen Giselle giving lots of hearts. So shout out to, to Giselle as well for always bringing the love and the light. Um, I don't see any questions here. So I hope that was nice and straightforward for you. If you, um, <laughs> oh, Heather. Yeah, that's, that's okay. You know, a lot of us are. And that is, um, she's talking about, I, she said, I'm definitely the procrastinator. I'll start next week. Um, that's okay, you know, and don't beat yourself up over that. I, I too, you know, when I'm working on something brand new, um, I'll have to come up against procrastina procrastination as well. And um, for a little while, it, it, it sucks me in because I don't realize that, it, that it's, it's got me under its little spell. But then I realize that I'm not moving forward in this thing that I really wanted to do. And I start to question that. And I think, okay, I know what's happening here. 
And here's what I do when I'm feeling uh, stuck in that procrastination stage um, is I just go back to the, the, what is the smallest baby step that I could do today? You know, um, if, if it's, um, say there's a, maybe there's a website, let's just use a website as an example. Um, I want to get this website created and I'm thinking, oh, this is so overwhelming and I haven't done a website before and I don't have time to sit down and make a website and I don't know how Squarespace works or whatever, you know, platform you choose. Um, and it's just like, oh, every time you sit down at the end of the day, you're too tired. You don't want to do this right now. Okay. So instead of taking on the whole chunk, the whole idea of I've got to get this website done instead think, okay, you know what? I am just going to have a glass of wine and sign into Squarespace or, or search different website platforms. And I'm just going to take a peek around. I don't have to get anything done tonight. I don't have to complete anything. I'm just going to like play around and, and, you know, tinker around and see what happens. And then maybe you'll discover that you do want to work with Squarespace or WordPress or whatever it is. And so maybe the next night or a couple nights later, you, you sign up for a free trial for Squarespace. And again, no pressure. You don't have to get the whole website done. You don't have to get the whole homepage done, but you just kind of start tinkering around with like, Oh, this is how I add text. That's cool. And Oh, this is how I can add a photo. Mm, that's cool. Oh. And before you know it, maybe you did make half a homepage or a half of something, but there's no pressure to finish it. Couple nights later, you go play around again. Hey, this is fun. Like, I want to start adding some colors here. And what else can I do? And and so then you start getting momentum that way. So anytime that I'm feeling like, oh, I'm just too tired. I don't want to do this right now. I have so much else to do. And I procrastinate. I think, okay. Let's remove the pressure off of myself to get this done or this whole thing done or whatever it is. What is one tiny little like chip in the ice that I could make tonight or, or tomorrow morning? You know, what is one little, maybe I'll just scroll and look at some domain names. Maybe I'll just purchase, you know, the domain name tonight and that's it. And then I'm done. You know, I've, at least, I've done something, right? And then, but you start to, to get momentum going right and that's all that matters i don't care if it's the smallest baby step of your life i don't care if the second step is this is the second smallest baby step of your life and the third and the fourth but what i do know is you will start momentum you will start momentum going the, the direction you want to go and honestly that's the hardest part is just those first couple baby steps and then the momentum starts to to carry on for itself so um I hope that helps anyone also that, that, you know, comes up against procrastination. Um, what is the unknown? As you said, not knowing all the steps. Cool. I'm happy that was helpful, Heather. You know, I know there's something's been in your heart for a while now. And to me, it's even a clearer sign than ever that it hasn't fallen off. It hasn't left your heart. So I know that it really is meant for you, which means you really are capable of it which really means that your reality will, will shift and bend to, to allow this to be your reality. Um, so, you know, I just, I really know that you're going to inspire your kids by following your dreams, by showing them that anything's possible, by being lit up by your work, by helping other people and in yet another way, a new way that really resonates with you. And you're going to bring that energy home and, and you know, when you tell them to follow their dreams, they're going to believe that they can because you did. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And I will be revealing the fifth and final step on Saturday morning. I hope you'll join me and I'll talk to you soon.